Good morning, folks. Pilgrim here. On the dream that God gave me yesterday morning, I'm going to recap on it because, you know, more came to my mind throughout the day. And sometimes that's the way it happens. You don't understand it at first, but then these thoughts just kind of drop in on you out of nowhere. Um, I can't remember which. It came in two parts, and I can't remember which part came first. Um, which part came first? I think the first scene, yes, I remember. The first scene was I was standing on the porch, the back porch of the house. Now, I call it the front, but Kelly calls it the back. She says the front door is over here. But everybody comes and goes. Visitors, business, we ourselves, the you know, main driveway is here, and everybody uses that side of the house, so to me that's the front door, it's the main one. And in the dream, I'm standing on the front porch with a camera, and I'm recording for a video that I want to put on YouTube. I don't have a camera anymore, so... Um, but that part of the house faces south. Now my walkway, standing on the porch, while I'm standing on the porch, is slightly south-southeast. And as I'm standing there, I can hear a noise, an approaching, rushing noise, like a, a steadily gathering wind or the marching of any boots. You know, it's just kind of a, uh, kind of a rumble. And I'm wondering what it is. And um, my natural assumption was that it would come from the walkway. Obviously, there's something in the woods. So I looked towards the walkway, but the sound was clearly coming from the southwest. And where the woods are thicker, denser, and there's people's properties are over there and so on, and the river runs through it. But my walkway is cut over here. And then I had to look over there and realized that the sound was coming from over there and I didn't know what it was or in what form it would take. Cut away to the next scene in the dream where I'm in a house with Native American people and they are, I don't know if they're moving out, being moved out, but they're taking things down and <coughs> They are telling me one of the things that they took down was a, a big piece of leather, but it had been imprinted with, um, hang on, here we go, got it, I was just looking for it, but it had been imprinted with a picture and, and writings, you know, stamped into the leather, and, and they said, yeah, we keep those above the doors in all our dwellings, and it was like a stamped leather fresco placed above the doors. In the same way that the Jews um, put mezuzahs in the door jamb of their doors and they touch it upon entering and leaving their property, but inside that little metal mezuzah, you got ceramic ones too, but inside there is a tiny little roll of scripture and prophecy. Words from the Lord himself. Specific words uh, from Deuteronomy. I think this was kind of the same idea. And he told me that it was Tazak. Now my understanding in the dream was that this was spelled T-A-Z-Z-A-K. And, uh, but I inserted an H after the two Z's to remind myself phonetically how these people had spoken it. It wasn't Tazak, it was Tazak. You know, something like that. So, I kept this in mind when I woke up. Now, yesterday I recounted past dreams that I've had from years past where I was shown things, you know, you cannot invent things that that you've never seen before and then have them be true. You know, um, when I was told about a coming attack upon the United States, uh, the town of uh, Pine Bluff was named now, I was very new to the state at the time. I hadn't been here long. I'd never heard of this town in my entire life. And I literally Googled it the next morning to see if this town existed. And not only did I find it exist, it, it existed, I found that it was a major weapons uh, 
creation, a, a major weapons developing uh, location. There's a huge facility down there that makes chemical weapons and so on. And they closed it down for a while and people kind of said, oh, where's, where's your, what happened to your dream now? And I said nothing because I know that privacy cannot be broken. And a couple of years later, about five years later, they reopened it and revamped it bigger and more powerful than it was before. They're developing more weapons on a greater scale. You know, security is tight around that place. Um, they revamped it bigger and better than before. And this was years before there was any trouble between Russia and the United States. And now you have what's going on right now. Boom. Pine Bluff is a target. Just like my dream. You cannot invent things before you've seen them. I remember another dream where, uh, a vision dream that God gave me, and it was me and Kelly were in the kingdom. And we had arrived by car to visit somebody that we knew from the old world, from this world. And she was a Native American lady. And <coughs> we got out of the car and walked down her lane, and there were three teepees. Um, on my right, on the ground, three miniature teepees. Uh, I don't know why they were there, but they were almost directly opposite a, a little side lane that went up to the house that she lived in on top of a hill. And I passed that and looked over to my right and saw a huge tent. Uh, and it was of a kind I've never seen before in my life. And she seemed, and the lady was sitting in there and she waved to us and we waved back and everything was just, the atmosphere was mind-blowing. I can't even tell you what it was like to be in the kingdom um, in that vision and uh, in that dream. And she was sitting in a rocking chair and around her were all her wares, you know, all kinds of pots and, and rugs and weavings and things like that that she was selling, I, I assume. But it was... But the tent, instead of being open at the end of the tent, the whole entire side was lifted up like a, a, a elongated door and supported by a series of poles. And the tent was lit up from the inside and there was all of her wares all the way along and she was sitting there. And I've never in my entire life seen a tent like this. There's no reason why I should imagine the thing. And when I told this on YouTube, Excuse me, uh, my my na my Native American friends uh, wrote to me and said, "Yeah, that tent is uh, called a such and such. We use it for exactly the purpose that you described in your dream." And they they said, "Yeah, it's, it's like you know we use them all the time, but you know it's like it, it's for such and such, and and this is the tent. Yeah, it, it exists. You cannot imagine something you've never seen." And then have it be real just because you you just can't do it it doesn't work that way it's not reality and so those two prophetic dreams are kind of emblematic of what i'm talking about um so yesterday i, I told about this dream that god gave about the <coughs> the the kind of rumbling or thunderous sound that was coming from over the trees and i spoke to my prophetic friend marcia about it and as we were discussing it, she sent me a video, which is basically the sum of everything that I've been trying to teach for the last, and share for the last 15 years of the Genesis timeline. It sums the whole thing up in one go. I mean, everything in one video, one 30 minute video. And it blew my mind. And as I was watching this, realizing what I was seeing, it dropped in on me that uh, it just a thought occurred to me that that sound that I could hear from over the trees from the thicker part of the forest it reminded me of the passage of scripture where Gideon I think it's Gideon was engaged in battle um, he was an unwilling warrior at first was it Gideon or David I think it was Gideon and the enemies were coming to attack Israel and as they did so, God's armies caused a crescendo of sounds to come above the trees from over the hills to which they were headed. And they heard the sound of an army 
much larger than they were. And they heard so many, this, uh, the sound of an army marching, that they, that the, uh, the Philistines dropped their weapons and fled. And I just found this passage of scripture just dropped into my mind out of nowhere as I was listening to this video that Marcia sent. And I was amazed because that's exactly what, this exactly what it reminded me of. So to me, with this drop-in occurring, it told me that this is the sound of war, warfare, war is coming to this nation. And it, you know, and then the video that I was watching, I hadn't even finished the video yet. Pastor Mark Biltz, who was instrumental in, in the, in the whole Genesis timeline ministry that God has given, that God had given to me, back in 2007. And I couldn't have done it without the information from Pastor Mark Biltz, who blew the doors wide open on how the. Jewish lunar charts matched up with NASA's charts over the last 6,000 years perfectly. All of the persecutions, all of the, all of the tribulations, every event surrounding Israel, all of those solar and lunar eclipses surrounding Israel, it was a direct match. And he blew the doors wide open on this and it, it spawned 100,000 books worldwide people became more focused on prophecy than they've ever been when they began to see the patterns and the sequences and the truth in it, including me. Uh, I didn't release books, but I, it really set fire to what I understood. And uh, you know, it blazed a trail as we we're heading towards the end of the end. And that this same guy, as I began to watch this video, the same information dropped and he began to talk about these eclipses, and especially the ones on April the 8th, and all that occurs after it. And he then said, war is coming to this nation. And he went into detail about that. Can you imagine what was happening in my brain when I, when I put these two together? And now even I'm gonna throw an even further detail in this, that the southeasterly direction was where I carved my pathway through the woods, and I made a lot of videos about that as I was doing it. But the sound of the marching boots coming over the tops of the trees in the thicker part of the forest is coming from the southwest. That's from where I live. That southwest direction is exactly where Eagles Pass is in Texas, where the confrontation is taking place and Texas is taking a stand against the inundation and the invasion of this of this country. It is directly towards that area of Texas from from my front porch. No question about it. And this is just like blowing my mind over and over and over as these pe as these pieces and details of information are coming. You understand? Throughout the day, God releases. God, God gives you a little bit more and a little bit more. Um, I still can't process everything that I, that I heard in Mark Belts's video. I mean, there is so much there. I can't process it. I couldn't even begin to think to the level that he does to recognize what he brought out in that video. And it is perhaps the most important video I've ever seen in my life regarding the end times, regarding my study. Uh, on the Genesis timeline prophecies, on the New Madrid fault line prophecies, everything that I can do and that I've tried to show summed up perfectly in this one interview with this guy. And uh, <coughs> he really brings it to a close. He doesn't focus on the New Madrid fault line so much because he's focused on the, on the lunar charts and the solar charts, and, and I totally understand that. But the two are connected, and you cannot separate New Madrid from April the 8th. And they will see this sooner or later. Keep on looking up, folks. God tolerates no rivals. God bless you.
I'm to have to see each other soon.